Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is the brand new Transformers Vintage Beast Wars reissue, Scorponok. And I gotta give a huge shout out to my friend Brad, the Texas Toy Hunter, for finding this guy for me. I have always wanted an original Scorponok figure. He was one of my favorite characters in the show, and hell, he's a scorpion. Scorpions are badass. So I am so happy to have this guy in my collection. Brad, thank you so much. Now let's take a quick look at the packaging. We got Transformers, Beast Wars, and some fantastic art of Scorbinok firing off his Cyber B. Everybody raves and raves about G1 box art. But man, Beast Wars was fantastic as well. I would love to get an art book of Beast Wars box art like I do with the G1. And let's see, you got Scorponok here behind the plastic. This is so cool. I love this vintage look. This is actually going to be my first vintage Beast Wars figure review. So I am excited to check these out. Anyway, on the side of the box, you've got the reptilian eye. The same artwork right there. Back of the box, you got a file card and all kinds of words and stuff. This side of the box, the same thing as the other side. And on the top, more of the artwork and the conversion. So now, without further ado, let's get this bug out of the box and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, once you get Scorponok all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with a vintage style instruction booklet. It's been a long time since I've seen the instructions from an original Beast Wars figure, but I do recall they looked a lot like this. And as usual, these are very well illustrated and easy to follow. He also comes with his two mega missiles, and both of those are exactly the same. And then, of course, you've got Scorponok himself. Now, one of the first things I noticed when I opened up Scorponok is that his collar is off from the original. The original Scorponok, from all the pictures I've seen, was black, where this Scorponok is a gunmetal gray, which I think looks really good. This Scorpion mode is badass looking. This by no means is a realistic looking Scorpion. This is more of a sci-fi Scorpion, which works. And I love the molded detail on this guy, all the textures and spikes just look so good, especially down here on the claws. You can see all the bumps and indentations, and man, that just looks awesome, you know, especially for a toy made back in 1996. Now, the legs, well, let's go ahead and go into articulation first. Articulation with the arms, they can rotate there at the shoulder, a complete 360. There is a elbow bend there, and a wrist rotation. Now, this claw here, if I open it up, see, this is the claw where the missiles will go. I'll show that off in robot mode. So, with this claw, you have articulation mainly here with the bottom claw, because when you open the top claw, this is going to fire the missiles. So, really good articulation here. He can do a very wide grip to grab some maximals. This claw, on the other hand, the arm has all the same articulation except when you get to the claw because this claw holds one of his gimmicks, his Cyber Bee, which we'll also go over more 
in robot mode. So you can't move this claw pincher at all. The mouth, surprisingly, has articulation. Now this is due to transformation, but still it's pretty cool. You can move these mandibles up and down, so I dig that. The scorpion legs here on the back, they can move up and down, once again for transformation, and it kind of sucks that there's that line right there holding them all together. But I guess, you know, the 90s, they had to do what they had to do. The tail, the tail can rotate here, it can go forward, and it's got a really cool gimmick if I can get it to work. You've got this little trigger right here, you push forward, there we go. So he has this striking motion, and that's slick. I like that. And I love the details on the scorpion tail. Uh, I like the serrated blade tip. That is awesome. Now, this is a very, very large scorpion. Let me bring in Kingdom Scorpionok for a comparison. And the only thing I really like about Kingdom Scorpionok is he is based on a realistic scorpion. So you can definitely see the difference there. So a really nice comparison from 1996 to 2021. So now let's go ahead and get Scorpionok transformed into his beast mode. Fairly simple transformation. You're going to take the head and push down. Those are actually going to be the robot legs. Bring those all the way around here. And then you've got the robot tail, or excuse me, the scorpion tail. You're going to bring the head out right there at the base of the tail. Yes, Scorpionok's head is actually up his own ass. So bring that around. And there's a peg right there that you'll match up to that center hole right there bring that up make sure you get the legs out of the way so you're gonna bring that up make sure the neck pegs into the chest get that pressed in you're gonna rotate the tail around like so and bring it up make sure you get your thumb right there and grab it by the base make sure you don't break this guy bring that up now the tails in place down here with the legs you're going to take the scorpion head and just split that wide open. Scorpionok's toes were actually the mouth of the scorpion. Now you're going to take the scorpion legs, fold those along his back, rotate the arms down, and there we have Scorpionok in robot mode. And I am going to have to zoom out because this is a tall figure. In robot mode, Scorpionok looks awesome and very imposing with the scorpion tail up over his back and those big massive claws for hands. Now, the one thing I don't like is when you rotate his arms around, all these screw heads show. you got six screw heads right there at his shoulders and one at the biceps. But there's just there's no way you can flip that to make it look good. All the molded detail comes through in robot mode as well. I love the chest, which was the back of the scorpion, scorpion before. Looks really good. Now, you will notice the head is a little off from what we're used to, and that's because Scorpionok, being a Wave 1 character from Beast Wars back in the day, came with a mutant head. And the mutant head is very alien, very insectoid, and actually looks really cool. To reveal the head that we're used to from the cartoon show, you just split this in half, and there we go. Of course, trying to get it to line up. His head sits down in this recess. So it's kind of hard to get that just right. There we go. So now there is the Scorpionok head we're used to with the gold visor and the, the helmet. But the mouth, I don't like the mouth on this guy. As you can see, he's yelling. He's got one of those yelling faces that I thought Hasbro just introduced with Dirge and who was the other one? Skywarp. And I, I'm not a big fan of that, but it is pretty well sculpted. You can see his teeth in there. So, you know, it is what it is. I'll probably, yeah, I'm going to have to leave him displayed like that because I do like how he looked from the cartoon show. But the mutant head, that's, that's a pretty cool option and looks really good. Now, articulation for the robot mode, the arms are exactly the same as in scorpion mode. Legs now. The hips are at a, on a ball joint, so they can rotate just like so. They can go forward, they can go back, they can go out, they can go in. 
There is a knee bend, no knee rotation, and the toes can move up and down, and that's due to transformation. Now, the legs are a little loose. These ball joints have a difficult time holding up Scorponok because the top of this bot is heavy. You've got the gimmick right there for the tail, the heavy claws, but once you get him in position, he sticks pretty good, but be aware there is some looseness with the hips. Nothing some floor polish can't fix. Now let's show off Scorponox gimmicks in robot mode. The tail gimmick is exactly the same. You grab the little lever here, push forward, and he can strike. It's just a shame you have to really hold him just right to get that to work, but still that's pretty cool. He's in a melee fight with somebody and wham, just spikes him right in the head. The missiles, we'll go ahead and show those off, go in the left hand. Make sure this top claw is down because when you push the top claw back all the way, that's what's going to fire the missiles. Let's see if these hold into place. I've seen some people say that their missiles don't and they fire out really easy. Mine look like they lock in place really good and they actually hide really well in the claw. If you could remember to use the bottom claw only. Now to fire the missile, let's go ahead and get this bottom claw out of the way. We'll point here to the back drop. And you take this claw, the upper claw, and just push back. And there's going to be two clicks that fire each missile. One, two. And they fire with some force. I love that. That's so awesome. I miss gimmicks with my Transformers. In the right hand is Scorpinox Cyber B. You can probably see a little bit of the B right there. And how this fires is you have this little trigger right here. Just pull it back, and the B launches. And when he launches... He opens up, and there is your Cyber Bee. Kind of looks like a yellow jacket or some kind of wasp. And this actually looks really good. I love the face sculpt on this guy. And underneath, he even has little legs and his stinger. So he can come at somebody, swoop him down, boom, take him out. And this, this is pretty slick. I like how that turns into a claw. Now, I do wish the wings had a little bit more articulation to kind of fold those back because the wings are the only thing that looks off on this but still that's a pretty cool gimmick now i did have an issue when i got scorpionox straight out of the packaging when i took the rubber band off this cyber bee he kept popping off he would not stay connected and we'll see if i can zoom in on this this here was the problem see the trigger the tip that has that little catch it was molded round. It barely fit into this slot right here. This is where the trigger goes. That little, this little square area right there. That's where the trigger catches. And straight out of the package where this was so rounded, it wouldn't. So what I had to do was very carefully, I got my X-Acto knife. I was able to take the claw apart. There's two screws right there. You can pop that little lever out. And I whittled a catch right there that locks into that B so much better. So now I don't worry about him popping off whatsoever. Once again, some other reviewers I've talked to say when they opened up Scorponok out of the packaging, let me show you how I fold this B back up to claw mode, is you take the little leg area and head, bring that up, bring the claws up around, and bring the stinger forward. So there's the top of the claw. So how that works, You've got this round section here, goes in the center with the spring, and then the catch goes in the little rectangle hole. Like I said, mine works perfect now, and it's not a hair trigger anymore. A lot of reviewers say they barely look at their Scorponok, and the uh, Cyber Bee falls out. But even after I had to do some minor corrective surgery on the guy, I still think he's a great figure. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is the Transformers Beast Wars Vintage Reissue Scorponok with the original 1996 Beast Wars Megatron, Kingdom Scorponok, and Transform Element Stinger Warrior. The Transformers Beast Wars Vintage Reissue Mega Class Scorponok was a great trip down memory lane for me. Even though I never had the original Scorponok figure, it was so cool 
Once again, holding that vintage Beast Wars style box, the vintage instructions, the gimmicks really took me back to 1996. I love the gimmicks on this guy, even though I had to do a little bit of surgery to get one to work correctly. It is just so cool having a figure that launches missiles, spring-loaded gimmicks, the extra added features, stuff we just don't get today that I know with modern technology, they could knock it out of the park. So there you go, guys. The Transformers Beast Wars Vintage Reissue Scorponok. So... Does a Transformers Beast Wars Vintage reissue Scorponok belong in your collection? Well, if you're a Beast Wars fan or never had the original, absolutely. I love this toy. He looks badass in robot mode. He looks badass in scorpion mode. Love the gimmicks with the striking tail, the missiles that actually shoot all the way across my office, and the Cyber B. Though I was a little miffed that I had to perform surgery right out of the box, to get the Cyber B to work. Now, I posted about that on Facebook last night, and a few people told me that the original Beast Wars Scorponok that I really have never touched, its Cyber B wouldn't stay in as well. So maybe the little rounded catch isn't as much the fact that this is an old mold. Maybe that's how it was originally molded. Uh, my fix, it's really easy, but be warned. You want to whittle off just a little bit at a time because if you cut too much off of that plastic, you are going to ruin your $40 figure. So I'm going to say that right now, if you screw your figure up, not my fault, just be careful. And I want to give another huge shout out to my buddy Brad for picking this guy up for me. Thank you so much because who knows when I would have seen this guy in my area. So yeah, Vintage Beast Wars Scorponok, awesome figure. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I want to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo